Hi, good morning, YouTubers. It's December 31st, 2020, and it's about 71 degrees at 10:30 uh, a.m. I'm back here in the garden with a couple of chickens. I let them out uh, once in a while because they like to pick up some bugs here and there. So basically, today I just want to go over some of the roots that attach themselves to the trees, and that's common amongst aeroids, hoyas, and orchids. So they somewhat have the same growing conditions. They like uh, pretty much part shade. They like uh, humidity and they like warmth. So here in Florida, I'm able to provide all that except for a few cold nights in the winter and then I have to scramble and protect all this. So I use a lot of the tropical plants to um, decorate the backyard. I use the orchids and the hoyas and, and the philodendrons work well together to create uh, a nice uh, tropical look. And uh, this Buddha in the fountain here, surrounded by some catlayas, some aeroids, like uh, there's, a, there's an anthurium over there, I don't know what it's called. Uh, there is a hoya diversifolia. It's, really big. Some, some Phelanopsis orchids, some other tropicals, and the Catlea there. Also attach uh, orchids with some moss to the uh, palm trees. And I use these little zip ties and then I cover them up with uh, some Spanish moss. And they should be blooming this winter. Some of these are already blooming. Let's see, I have been attaching a lot of plants to the trees. And then I use these zip ties to attach them. And then I hang hoyas from them. So over here, I have some of my crosses I'm growing out. And, uh, it just creates a wall of plants. So let's see the roots now. So orchids, like aeroids and hoyas, they have these aerial roots that attach themselves to trees. And that's pretty common what they do in nature. This is a Phalaenopsis orchid and it's putting out these beautiful roots. This Monstera uh, adansonii is also attached itself to this palm tree. As you can see, there's some roots. Uh, and I predict by the end of the summer, this tree will reach the canopy. I I'm sorry, this uh, adansonii will reach the can canopy of this foxtail palm. And then I have uh, the bamboo back there is actually in the neighbor's yard, but it uh, has made its way into my yard. It's a variegated bamboo uh, and I like it a lot. Provides a lot of privacy as well. So let's move on to see some Hoya roots. Okay, we have more orchids here attached. Some more of my hybrids awaiting flowers. And I have a Hoya um, Michelle over here. And here are my favorite new racks that I got. They hold about 20 plants. We have a lot of uh, different bulbophyllums over here. And all these begonias had to go in because it got really cold last week. So a lot of these plants were actually in the garage or in the house or in the greenhouse. 
Sequoia Lindaris. It only does great for me in the winter. It doesn't like the heat. Some nice sized Bulbophyllums. This one I got as annoyed the other day at a local nursery. It says unknown Bulbophyllum from KS. I'm thinking KS is from Carl Smith. This begonia leaf is quite beautiful. It's uh, that is begonia. I can't pronounce it right now. I can't see it. But I will write it down on the comments. This Colethea friend gave me is doesn't look very interesting but the back side of it it's like um like a nice velvet it's really nice to feel and it seems to be doing so well and has a nice dark side as well this bulbophyllum is still going and more spikes coming along and uh, just want to go over here and show you some Hoyas that have attached themselves to the trunks. You know, like I said before, these roots were basically designed for um, attaching themselves to trees because Hoyas and philodendrons and a lot of tropical plants are understory plants and they kind of want to climb up the tree to get to more light uh, so they do that and they don't they're not potted plants uh, or um, in the ground so you have a situation where these roots provide support and nutrients from being attached to the trees um, over here i have a hoya salata and she's pretty much attached to the tree and hopefully you can see she will keep going and uh, another interesting aeroid that I have over here is uh, the Epiprimum Cebu Blue it started out in a little pot down there and for the first few months it grew slow until it started climbing up the tree and then um, once it was firmly attached to the tree, it kept growing and growing and the leaves kept getting bigger and then started to thin straight. And now I can't even see the top of it. Uh, it's climbing up the tree. So as you can see, they do much better when they uh, follow their natural instincts and climb trees and grow uh, like they do in the wild. But, of course, most of the country here in the United States, uh, you can't grow these up in the trees year-round because of the cold weather. So we adapt these plants to, uh, to live in a house environment, basically, and we put them in pots. Um, so the trick to that, uh, and a lot of people are successful at growing them, but you have to remember that these roots don't like to be smothered in in soil so the soil mix has to be really really um, chunky and lots of pieces of wood or coconut husk or some people are using weka um, so that the roots are exposed to the air the roots want air circulation around them uh, to survive or else they'll rot really quick so you have to keep that in mind so you <laughs> Here the chickens going at it. I think they're gonna lay an egg pretty soon. So back here you'll see some orchids that are going crazy with roots. Uh, in this case, the dendrobium is really attached itself to the fence. Um, and then I have a really interesting dendrobium over here. That has about 
three feet of roots. If you can see, this is uh, Dandrobium speciosum. I don't know if that's how you say it, but it, the roots go down quite a bit, you know, at least three feet. And hopefully it'll bloom. It's a pretty showy plant, speciosum. And it's putting out some nice new canes. So it looks pretty happy there. So yeah, if you let plants do their own thing, sometimes it's best if you try to like manipulate their roots or move them around too much, they will not like it. You can see another, this is, um, a little orchid called why not and it's all all the roots are coming out of the pot and uh attaching itself to the wood and it's it's happy that way it's put out a lot of new growth so yeah that's pretty much um my spiel on the roots today i'll just show you a couple more hoyas and uh that'll be my last video for the year and Swiffer must be hiding today. She's camera shy sometimes. Yeah, over here there's an interesting Hoya that I received as a gift. It was some, some grower in Thailand and they gave it to me as one of their new seedlings about three years ago. And it's interesting because the darkness around the edge of the flower is different than most other Hoyas I've seen. I haven't seen blooms on this one, but it uh, should be interesting. I like surprises, so I have no idea of the parents on that one. And here's one of my gray ghosts. It's kind of looking, eh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it doesn't like the cold. But let's see, it'll bounce back. I fertilized it, gave it some fish emulsion. Let's see what happens. And there's a couple other things I wanted to show you. Oh, let's go over here. And here is the Abulmum bulbophyllum. This one is Emily Seagurst. And she's a happy girl. She has one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's more spikes coming, so she's blooming her little heart out. And my Christmas cactus is a little late. And then I have a couple interesting hoys down here. This one is Leo and Joseph. It's a, I believe it's a Carnosa cross, but it has nice nice size leaves with a lot of splash and this is uh dalton henry doing pretty well grows all it's putting out new growth in the winter here so it's a good thing and down there is uh hoya sr 2009-5 from malaysia but these leaves get a lot bigger when the plant matures it has uh gets nice splash and veins as well so yeah that is it for today i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful new year and that things improve and that we can go out and travel and search for plants in other places because you can never never have enough plants as you can see i've been working on that for a few years Thank you very much, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.